Good morning, church family. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ken Conaby. I'm one of the pastors here at First Methodist Houston, and I'm so glad that you've joined us for our online worship service today. As we enter into this time, I want to remind you that we are in our sermon series, First Five, talking about the core principles on what it, we believe it means to be a part of the community here at First Methodist Houston and what we believe it, it means to have a holistic life uh, committed to the purposes and the guidance of our God as he guides us forward as a community and as people uh, in worship. And so uh, we've talked a lot about uh, what does it mean to worship? We have talked about what does it mean to be in community? What does it mean to serve? What does it mean to be generous? And this week, our last week, we are talking about what does it mean to be people of justice? Our scripture today comes from the prophet Micah. And, uh, and our scripture is kind of a summary. It's, it's kind of when you think about Micah, many times this is the key verse that people kind of tune into because it is such a quick kind of summary of what Micah is talking about, what he's addressing. Micah is looking at Israel. It's around 700 BC, and he's watching Israel. It's a divided nation now. There are all sorts of factions, and he's seeing the land of God being conquered by other foreign powers. So there's lots of conflict happening around him, a lot of change. Uh, there's been a lot of injustice as well. Micah spends time pointing out the injustices that happen, the fact that bribery is happening not only in the courts and in the people in power, but in the religious and in the places of prophecy and things like that, that people are paying for blessings and paying for favors and they're gaining wealth at the, at the cost of those who are poor. That the poor are becoming poor, they're being oppressed, they're being hurt, they're being damaged by the system in which they live. It's also a place where the courts are valuing wealth more than just people, where your wealth and your power and your things have an influence if you go to courts. So in the courts, the courts are skewed to those who have money. And he looks at this and he, he sees injustice. He sees injustice happening, that people are being hurt. They're no longer following the will of God outlined in the Torah, those first five books outlined in the promise to Abraham and in the law of Moses. He's looking around and he's seeing the ways in which the nation has stepped away from the just goodness and call of God. And so injustice reigns. And so the first thing he points out is the justice component. The thing he's honing in on is the injustice that's happening around him. But he also proclaims God's mercy in the midst of God's judgment. This idea that in ma no matter what, no matter how bad things are and how bad things might get as the people become lost and divided and factioned and conquered, that a remnant will return, that a remnant will come back. They will follow the will of God, that, that they will follow and be with the presence of God, that God will become a beacon to the world. And this is done through God's mercy. And so Micah has this balance because God has to judge injustice. He has to judge that which goes against how God created the world to be, what God calls the world to be. He has to punish and judge injustice, but his mercy abounds even more. And it is through his mercy that the people will continue to be able to choose to be in the presence of God, to follow the will of God. And as he puts it in our scripture, to walk humbly with God. Micah has a lot of wisdom for us to look at. And the thing I would like to hone in first is the walk humbly with God, this last section. Because what Micah sees around him is that if justice are to happen and mercy is to reign, it is only through God. 
If we want to reflect and say, what does this mean for us here and now, we have to remember that it is God in all things, that God is creator of all things, sustainer of all things. Justice, the act of creating justice, the act of proclaiming justice is holy and fully the possession of our creator. We are people, as Christians, as people who follow God, who not just believe that God exists, but believe in the purposes, the call, the higher purpose of our God. That God is the one who proclaims justice. God is the one who accomplishes justice in all things. And if we want to be people who see that here in this world, in this place, then we must humbly walk with God. Humbly following our God, recognizing that it is by God's power and God's will that that perfection, that the garden, that Eden can be found. It is only in the perfect God that we can become God's good creation, fully and wholly as God intended us to be. And that only happens through the invitation of mercy. Because it's interesting, (laughs) as we look around at our country, at the world around us, at our community, there is a clear stain. There's a clear stain that exists. There are people in our world who are homeless who don't have a place to live. There are people in our world and in our country and in our community who are hungry. There are people in this world who are treated less because they are foreign or they are different or their skin was a different color. There are people who have been used and abused through systems of slavery and exploitation. If we look around the world, we see that every time the world tries to build paradise, it becomes someone else's nightmare. That the world creates things based on hierarchy and greed and selfish gain, which inevitably causes suffering. It inevitably creates suffering in our world. It's an inescapable reality of what the world creates, no matter the system, no matter the the idea behind it. That is true. And as I look out in the world and I see people who work 40 hours or more a week who can barely put food on the table and have a place to live and take care of their family, I see injustice. When I see the history of slavery and the history behind the people who have continually tried to keep different systems in place that some might benefit at the cost of others, I see injustice. I see injustice in the way in which someone is not given mercy in our world, that going to jail or having a conviction is a stain that is irremovable, that dooms you to a life of less. I see an injustice system that values those who can pay the best and the brightest lawyers. I also see goodness in our world. I see people walking out in this world caring and loving for those who are in need, feeding the poor and the needy and the homeless, taking care of the orphan and the widow. But this is only possible. We have only hope for justice. We can only do justice through the mercy of God. Because we are guilty in some form of fashion of injustice. We all have gotten it wrong in some way or another, whether it be in complicity or in action. We all have work to do, and it is only possible through God's mercy. 
God's forgiveness, which requires our repentance. If we want to be people of justice, if we want to do justice in the world, it means taking a hard look at ourselves, having hard conversations with others, listening to those who are saying they are suffering, listening to what they are saying and allowing it to speak to us, to challenge us, to shape us, to lead us, because God is speaking in that space. The Spirit of God is most alive in the place of injustice, the places of suffering in this world. And this last part, do justice requires that we take that repentance and that listening seriously. That we take that conversation and we take that reflection seriously and that we step out and do. We live our lives in new ways. We behave in new ways. We act in new ways. We challenge ourselves in new ways to act differently in this world based upon the ways in which God reveals his just will around us. Justice does not belong to a faction. It belongs to our God, and we are called to be God's people, to be people of justice. It doesn't mean dominating the world into submission. We aren't an army that conquers. We are an army of servants, an army who proclaims and lives the reality of God. Those who serve our country call themselves public servants. That means they are the public's servants. The church's job is to be a people who is immersed in the people, to be public servants in our own way, to go to the places of need and tell them that they are valued, not only to meet the need, but that they are loved, that their soul matters just as much as ours, that their life matters as much as mine. To go to those people who are hurting, to listen, to be with them, and to speak the word of significance given to all of us by God. Our job is to move beyond the factions for the purposes of our Creator. We belong to God. We humbly walk with God, and we allow everything to be subject to that truth. And God calls us to be people of justice. And so we are. We are in our worship. We proclaim God's mercy in our worship. We proclaim God's will in our worship that we might be empowered, that we might remind ourselves that God is the source of all that guides us, that gives us life. We gather together to speak that love and kindness to each other, to embolden each other, to share our gifts with each other in community. We step out and we seek to share that to the world in service to the world. Giving of ourselves generously, whether it be the wealth and the money that we may have been able to earn or the gifts and the talents that we have grown, we step out generously serving and caring in our community and outside of it in all that we do. Because what we are called to be are people who create a space, a kingdom, to be the kingdom of God's just will. To be a people that looks like our future hope, because we believe that it is only through God that this world can be brought to true paradise and true peace, where it is no one's nightmare, but we live in harmony with each other, in harmony with each other and our God, and it is only through God that that is possible. It is our future hope, and we are called to make it, to seek after it as our present reality. And Jesus is the full embodiment of this. He came listening to those who were in need. He came listening to the poor and the needy, the orphan, the widows, those who were labeled sinners, those who were labeled foreigners, those who were labeled less. He spent time with them. He loved them. And at the end of his time with us, 
before in our worst moment with him, when we would kill the Son of God, in our worst moment, before this, before we would do this worst space, in full knowledge of that, Jesus sat down with those who had been with him along that journey to remind them that even in the midst of the decision that is to come, that bad decision and the, and the many rejections of Jesus, that God chooses mercy. It is here at the communion table. It is here in this space that we remember the full call of God, the call to walk humbly with God in his mercy and to be people who seek his justice. On the night in which Jesus would be betrayed and he would go be arrested and persecuted for the words of justice and love that he was speaking to the world around him, he sat down with those he loved He took bread, he broke it, and he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. In the same way, he took the cup. At the end of the meal, he lifted it up, he said, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do it, remember me. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you. God, Lord, that you call us to be your remnant, to be your people, to walk humbly, to follow you. God, we pray that we would come to deeper understanding of your mercy. God, the way in which you love us. God, the way in which you bring us to places of conviction, not that we might find shame, but that we might discover and embody your mercy and love even more. God, allow us to step in to that mercy with each other. Allow us to have radical conversations about the things that plague our world, about poverty and racism. God, embolden us. Embolden us to step into powerful conversations of mercy as we go forward. God, God, that we might be, be people, your people, your kingdom, who do acts of justice, acts of your will, that create spaces of our future hope in you. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on this gift of bread and wine, that you would make it be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Make us one with you, one with each other, and one in service to the world and in witness to the world until you come in final victory and restore the injustice of this world to your goodness and your love. We pray this all in your precious and holy name we pray, amen. Church family, this is the body of Christ broken for you and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. As you go from here, Would God continue to reveal his love and mercy, calling you to humbly follow him forward and to be people who look beyond the factions of this world and seek to do the love and justice of God in all that you do. Go in the peace and the love of God.